Hello, and welcome to the Seago Systems technical training session. This session provides planning, installation, and configuration information for the Seago I.O. Director. From simple decisions about which power cables are needed, to more complicated architectural discussions about network and storage connectivity, proper planning will simplify the overall process of getting the Seago I.O. Director and virtual interfaces up and running in your environment. Use the following items as a checklist for discussions when planning the implementation of virtual I.O. using the Seago I.O. Direct. Number of servers. As few as a dozen and well over a hundred servers may be attached to the Seago I.O. Director. In addition to the number of servers, the type of InfiniBand connectivity must be decided. Although the ports on the Seago I.O. Director are DDR, it is possible to attach servers through a QDR expansion switch. Network design. The virtual NIC interfaces can be adapted to fit most any network architecture. Consider the following configuration details when planning network connectivity. Trunk versus access and other VLAN considerations for the virtual NIC interfaces and the Ethernet ports of the SIGO IO modules. Link aggregation group configuration, MTU considerations, IP address management, storage configuration. The virtual HBA interfaces can be treated just like their physical counterparts in the overall storage architecture. Consider the following configuration details when planning storage connectivity. The fiber channel port attached to the Seago I.O. Director must support N-Port ID virtualization. Ensure this capability is enabled on your fiber channel switches. N-Port ID virtualization and virtual interfaces have implications on fiber channel zoning practices. With virtual interfaces, creating zones based on physical ports will no longer produce isolated storage configurations. Dependency and failover architecture. Understand the capabilities of virtual I.O. and how it interacts with redundancy and failover architecture in the data center infrastructure. Surfer type and OS. Review the server and OS details to ensure no known issues exist when implementing virtual I.O. Physical I.O. modules and ports in the I.O. director. Review the number and type of Ethernet ports and fiber channel ports required. This may need to be an estimate unless careful analysis of I.O. on physical ports has already been done. Finally, review the power and cooling requirements. The installation process is outlined in this section. For full details, please refer to the product documentation. The installation process is comprised of the following steps. SIGO I.O. Director Physical Installation the rack mount procedure of the Seago I.O. Director is described in the product documentation. Once installed in a data center rack, provide power cables, management interface cables, Ethernet and fiber channel, and InfiniBand data cables. Refer to your server's product documentation for the installation procedures required to add an interface card to the server. Seago Host Driver Installation Refer to Seago product documentation for host driver installation procedures. These procedures vary by operating system. Seago Management System Installation XMS is pre-installed in a virtual appliance that can be imported into any ESX host. Optionally, it can be installed onto a Red Hat Linux host. Refer to the installation documentation for specific system and OS details required to support XMS. Seago IO Director Management Interface Configuration The Seago IO Director can be accessed over the Ethernet management port using the default IP address of 192.168.1.1. Alternatively, it can be accessed over the serial port using the default baud rate of 115,200. The default login and password to access the Seago I.O. Director are admin and admin, respectively. You will run the Seago OS configuration wizard to complete the configuration of the management interface. Before virtual interfaces can be configured for the host servers, a Seago I.O. Director must be configured with an object called a server profile. A server profile represents a logical association between the Seago I.O. Director and an HCA port on a server. The server profile can contain one or more virtual resources. Server profiles are named to create an easy reference for an associated server. Every virtual interface must be associated with a server profile. A virtual NIC represents a logical association between a server profile and a physical Ethernet port. Each vNIC has a unique MAC address chosen from a pool of MAC addresses assigned to the Seago I.O. Director. The vNIC name is typically chosen to mimic a physical Ethernet interface name, such as vNIC1 or vNIC2, or to reflect the purpose of that vNIC, 
such as VMNet1 or VMotion1. VNet can be created using the command line interface or the Seagull Management System GUI. A virtual HBA represents a logical association between a server profile and a physical fiber channel port. Each VHBA has a unique worldwide name chosen from a pool of worldwide names assigned to the SIGO I.O. director. The VHBA name is typically chosen to mimic a physical fiber channel interface name, such as VHBA1 or VHBA2. A VHBA can be created using the command line interface or the SIGO management system GUI. The following are recommended operations procedures. Configuration backup. Once configured, each SIGO I.O. director has unique configuration data. This information should be backed up on a regular basis. Refer to product documentation or online training for details of the backup procedure. Upgrade procedures. Refer to product documentation or online training for details of the upgrade procedures. Upgrades can be initiated using the command line interface or the SIGO management system GUI. SNMP monitoring and phone home configuration. Configure network monitoring software and the SIGO I.O. Director phone home capability to monitor the health and performance of the SIGO I.O. Director.